Alice A. Bailey lived from 1880 to 1949 and spent most of her time as a teacher and writer on themes of the occult, astrology, spirituality and theosophy. She stated that the majority of her books were telepathically channeled through her by a spirit being who she believed to be a master of wisdom. Initially, she just referred to the being as the Tibetan, or by the initials DK. Later, she called it Jual Kool. She showed the same kind of mental disturbance that we've seen in other occultists in the past. As a child, Bailey was deeply unhappy and attempted suicide on three occasions, once when she was five, then when she was 11, and the third time at an unspecified time before the age of 15. It was after this third attempt, aged 15, on June the 30th, 1895, that she was apparently visited by a stranger who told her that she needed to develop self-control in preparation for certain work that was planned for her to do. Coming from an Anglican background, she initially believed this man to be Jesus, but later identified him as a spirit called Master Kuthumi after she went to the Occult Theosophical Society and saw a portrait of him hanging on the wall. Theosophists believed that this spirit had previous incarnations and that one of them was Pythagoras, who you might remember was an influence on Plato, and also St. Francis of Assisi, amongst others. As a result of this, St. Francis of Assisi has been named the patron saint of the United Nations. You may also remember that St. Francis of Assisi was one of the main inspirations for Ignatius Loyola. On top of this, it's also in St. Francis Day that thousands flock to the Cathedral of St. John the Divine in New York City for the mocking Blessing of the Beast ceremony. You may also remember that the UN chose San Francisco, which is Spanish for St. Francis, as the location for the first UN meeting and charter signing. Plus, the town of San Francisco is known for being especially liberal and permissive. I haven't done any research into St. Francis, so I don't know why he keeps popping up and why he holds such a special place in the hearts of occultists, but there is clearly some reason for these links. Because Alice Bailey initially thought this demonic spirit was Jesus, we see once again the ability of Satan to disguise himself as an angel of light. In earlier life, Bailey was married to an Episcopalian minister, but after it failed, she severed ties with her Christian heritage altogether and remarried a 32nd degree Freemason, Foster Bailey. Together, they founded the esoteric magazine The Beacon and started a company called The Lucifer Trust. This organization was created to manage the business of publishing her 25 demonically channeled books. They later changed its name to The Lucis Trust to hide its true meaning. This Lucis Trust is today another key NGO for the United Nations. As a subsidiary to the Lucis Trust, they also created the World Goodwill Organization to help mobilize the energy of goodwill to cooperate in the work of preparation for the reappearance of the Christ, to educate public opinion on the causes of the major world problems, and to help create the thought form of the solutions. She also used the Lucis Trust to found something called the Arcane School, which gives a series of courses on her views on karma, reincarnation and the divine nature of man. The school uses typical hierarchical degrees of esoteric knowledge. As is to be expected of anyone driven by the hidden hand of Satan, she also had the telltale hatred for the Jewish people, referring to them as the Jewish problem. Now from that background you can probably tell that her teaching's not going to be good, but here are some quotes. She wrote, I dedicate myself and you to the service of the coming one, and will do all I can to prepare men's minds and hearts for that event. I have no other life intention. Now when occultists talk about a coming one, or even use the term Christ, or cosmic Christ, they are not referring to Jesus, who in their inverted version of events is the evil one. To them, the Christ is in fact Lucifer, the Antichrist. This is the one for whom they wait, and the one who they are preparing the world to receive. Indeed, she clarifies this when she writes, The Tibetan has asked me to make clear that when he is speaking of the Christ, he is referring to his official name as head of the hierarchy. The Christ works for all men irrespective of their faith. He does not belong to the Christian world any more than to the Buddhist or Mohammedan or any other faith. There is no need for any man to join the Christian church in order to be affiliated with Christ. The requirements are to love your fellow men, lead a disciplined life, recognize the divinity in all faiths and all beings, and rule your daily life with love. So here we see her demonic spirit guide telling her to promote the idea that all faiths are equal and there is no single faith that is exclusively true. These are the ideas that are built into Robert Muller's World Core Curriculum. 
Alice A. Bailey wrote that when their Antichrist comes, first of all, he will come to a world which is essentially one world. So they believe that they have to create this one world order in order to prepare the way for their Antichrist. That's what the UN are doing. Bailey goes on to say, The major effect of his appearance will surely be to demonstrate in every land the effects of a spirit of inclusiveness, an inclusiveness which will be channeled or expressed through him. All who seek right human relations will be gathered automatically to him, whether they are in one of the great world religions or not. She then goes on to say, All who see no true or basic difference between religion and religion, or between man and man, or nation and nation, will rally round him. Those who embody the spirit of exclusiveness and separateness will stand automatically and equally revealed, and all men will know them for what they are. So the Antichrist will have all the world's religions rallying round him and finding in him their shared Babylonian origins which will unite them all. But yet she talks distastefully about another group of people at this time who will be exclusive and separated from the group. Who will these people be? The ones that don't conform. Those of the Judeo-Christian heritage, of course. We who adhere to the only faith that is genuinely different and which isn't rooted in Babylon. As you might imagine, we who are seen to be opposing this world peace and not joining in the unity will be seen as hateful and intolerant. We therefore will be hated and despised and persecuted for not conforming to the crowd. This spirit of inclusiveness, as she calls it, is already on show in the world today, but it will grow stronger. As the world pulls together in a one-world system, Christians who are brave enough not to conform will increasingly be isolated and separated. Bailey herself confirmed that all religions emanate from the same spiritual source and that one day everyone would come to realise this. As they do so, she predicted that the world would see the emergence of a universal world religion and new world order. She said that this was no distant dream, but was actually happening even in her own time. She wrote, There will not be any dissociation between the universal church, the sacred lodge of all true masons and the inner circles of the esoteric societies. In this way, the goals and work of the United Nations shall be solidified, and a new Church of God, led by all the religions and by all the spiritual groups, shall put an end to the great heresy of separateness. All forms of Freemasonry and all the false religions and philosophies of the world that have their roots in Babylon will one day come together under a single banner. This is the essence of postmodernism. People are moving away from outright atheism and returning to ancient religion. Bailey refers specifically to the United Nations again, saying, Evidence of the growth of the human intellect along the needed receptive lines can be seen in the planning of various nations and in the efforts of the United Nations to formulate a world plan. From the very start of this unfoldment, three occult factors have governed the development of all these plans. Bailey doesn't reveal what these three occult factors are, but the main point is that she is explicitly revealing the occult nature of the UN and their plans to implement a one-world religious system. She again goes on to say, Within the United Nations is the German seed of a great international and meditating, reflective group, a group of thinking and informed men and women in whose hands lie the destiny of humanity. This is largely under the control of many fourth-ray disciples, if you could but realise it, and their point of meditative focus is the intuitional or buddhic plane, the plane upon which the hierarchical activity is today to be found. Again, I don't know too much about this astrological system of which she speaks, and I don't think we need to go too much into it, but it's interesting that this fourth-ray discipline has the name Harmony Through Conflict, and is connected with the moon. So she's basically referring to the Hegelian principle and Asherah. And because we've always looked at the sun and moon in tandem, the sun in this astrological system of Bailey's apparently belongs to the second ray, which represents seeing beyond differences into unifying principles. Again, a feature of our time. Remember, Robert Muller said that the basis of his educational ideas came from Alice A. Bailey. These are the ideas that the UN gave him an award for, and these are the ideas that the UN wants to be filtered into every school around the world so that coming generations of children will grow up with this mindset.